Start with a uh, simple exercise for demonstrating the loop, the for loop inside of Unity. For this demo, I'm actually gonna take my game window and pull it down here. It's not super important, and honestly, I'd rather uh, visualize this through the scene view. So I'm sort of just kind of getting this down and out of the way, and maybe I'll even make some more room. I won't be using that project window too much either. Um, okay, cool. So in order to, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna start creating objects using a for loop. Um, uh, I'm going to do this all with code though, right? So I'm actually not going to go up to here to the typical menu game object and then 3D object cube. And I'm not going to use this create menu here. I'm actually just going to create a game object, an empty game object, attach a script to it, and then create um, objects using a for loop completely from that. So let's go to create, create empty, and I'm going to go ahead and name this thing for loop geo for game object. Cool, for loop go, looks like. Uh, I'm also gonna make sure that this thing is zeroed out. I can either zero, 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 or I could use the cogwheel here and choose reset, that works too. I'm gonna go add component, choose new script, and in the script, I'm gonna call this cube builder. Make sure that it's JavaScript, and then go ahead and hit create. Now, I'm gonna, that's all the Unity that we really need to do here. The rest is gonna be JavaScript. So let me open up Cube Builder, and it should pop open in Mono Develop. Cool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge this so that I can actually see. I'm using Command Shift Plus to enlarge in Mono Develop. And then I'm going, going to delete my update function. I actually don't need an update function even. All I want is for at the very start of my game, for this function to get fired one time, and I want it to build a cube. Simple, right? So here it is. Here's the command in Unity for building a cube. We're gonna say game object dot create primitive. Primitive is referring to basic, basic geometry, uh, like a cube sphere, that kind of thing. And then inside of create primitive, it's gonna be primitive type dot cube. This also works for sphere, cylinder, all those kind of things. Hit save, I'll jump back into Unity, I'll click the play button, and there it is, right? There's the cube, wasn't there before, it is there now. Nice. Okay, but obviously I'm not using a for loop yet. Um, all I've done is just to create one. Now let's say that I wanna create three. Uh, well, this is what the for loop is for, and it has a little bit of strange syntax, so we're gonna kinda do this slowly together. The first thing that we're gonna need here is the keyword for, parentheses and curly brackets. This should look sort of like an if statement, but instead of putting a conditional in here, I'm actually gonna put three pieces. I'm gonna say, first off, var i, i stands for index, and it's gonna equal to zero. What this means is that we're going to start counting, let's say, at zero, so the first time that um, this is executed, the first time that this code is executed, I will equal zero. You'll see in a second how we iterate each time after that. Uh, secondly, I'm gonna say i is less than uh, three. So what that's saying is, if you remember before, we said we're gonna create three cubes, right? So the first time it'll be zero, then it'll be one, then it'll be two, the next time it'll be three, and this will fail, and the for loop should exit. Uh, the third category here is just i++, meaning that after the this is done executing each time, and then this goes up by one, i goes up by one. Um, so let's see what happens here. After we've done this, we're gonna go ahead and save, jump back into Unity, click play, and actually three cubes have been created here. We should just only see one uh, in our scene view, but in our inspector window, um, sorry, in my hierarchy over here to the left-hand side, I can see that I actually have three cubes now. This is the original one, okay, cool. So that's pretty nice, but I actually would like them to spread out like this on their own. So let's see what we can do in our for loop to kind of give these things a little bit of spacing. First off, um, the number three here, this stinks. Putting hard coding in like this is not the way to go. We'd much rather have a variable here. So I'm gonna call this num. Uh, we could call it max, num cubes, whatever, whatever you wanna make it. Mine's just gonna be num here uh, for number. And then up above the start function, I'm gonna create a public var called num of type integer. It's never gonna be a number in between. We're not gonna have one and a half cubes, so integer seems like the right call here. And then you'll notice that when I click on my for loop, I get a new public 
variable over here, cool, called num. And if I choose one and hit play, then I'm gonna have one cube, there he is, right? And if I go over here and say, oh, didn't mean to hit play again. If I go over here and choose instead 100 and hit play, then I will get 100 cubes. Cool, so that's, that's making us much more efficient already. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is we're actually gonna to need to be able to position these cubes. So after I've built the cube, then I'm going to need to position the cube. Now, this is the tricky part. In order to have access to this thing that we just created, we're gonna to need to first put it in a variable. So on line nine here, it might be different for you slightly, uh, but for me it's line nine. I'm actually gonna to need to make a variable to hold uh, the cube that I'm creating. So in this case, let's say var cube, that's what I'll name it. It's a type game object, and it equals this whole thing. Game object create primitive, primitive type cube. What this allows us to do is then come down here in the position the cube section and say cube.transform.position equals, and then we can simply put in a vector three, an x, y, and z position, and that's where it'll appear. So let's try, um, why don't we do this? Why don't we do 0, 10, 0. Cool, let's save it, let's test it. And we're gonna see that our cubes appear in a different place than before. In fact, I don't even see them here. If I scroll out a little though, I can see that here's one of the cubes and it is at 0, 10, 0. I'm looking over here in the position uh, section. And that's not really what I wanted either because now every single one of the 100 cubes are all at 0, 10, 0. Right? So what can I use in order to uh, spread these out a little bit? Well, imagine this. This number, right, this i, this is going up every single time we loop through. So we can actually use this to our advantage. We can use this variable um, to say, for instance, that the first cube has a position of 0. The second cube, because of this plus plus, will have a position maybe in the x of 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4. In doing this, we can shift over each time. What I've done here is I've just changed the 0 in the x position in my vector 3 to instead be i. So let's save this. Let's play it again. Aha, there we go. Cool, so now I have 100 cubes long, right? But they're all different. They're all individual cubes and they're all spread out. That's awesome. Now what I'd really like is if they would actually uh, have a little space in between them so that we could see them as a grid of cubes instead of one big straight line looking thing. Because really, I mean, I could have taken one cube and stretched it out if I really wanted to look like that. So I'm gonna change this back to 10. In fact, I might just do seven cubes. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add another variable in my code. And this variable is gonna be public also public var, and I'm going to call it spread. Um, I'm going to make spread an integer too, I suppose, why not? And what spread is going to be is how far apart should each of the cubes be. For instance, if this was zero, I'm going to add it right here, times spread, then everything times spread would equal zero and everything would be stacking right on top of each other. If spread were one, then i times one, uh, you know, one times one, two times one, three times one, four times one, five times one, it would just be a straight line like we already have now. But if I were to go back in here and say, okay, well, I'll give it a spread now, as soon as it pops up, there we go, of two, then instead of moving one unit over each time, they're gonna move two units over each time. If you don't quite get this yet, don't worry about it. It takes a little bit of a time to understand, but I think that Unity does a great job in 3D space of showing what's happening here. Um, if you're confused again, go back to your code, kind of go through line by line, and we'll get this figured out. Uh, just for the sake of explanation, let's try this at 10. And now we have 10 units in between each one. Cool, right, so the first cube, its x position is zero. The second cube's exposition is 10, right? 10 times one. The next one is 20, 30, 40, 50. And we can see each time it goes up by 10 instead of going up by one. That's what the spread value does. Uh, now it's kind of weird that these end up at uh, 10 in the Y. So I'm gonna put this back down so that it's zero. Whoops, don't need to hit enter there. All right, great. Now this is, um, this is pretty good so far. 
why don't I, um, one thing that's kind of still bugging me is that when I go ahead and create this, I didn't save before, so it'll still all be at 10. Um, but notice how my game object is way over here at 0, 0, 0, and then these kind of build off in one direction this way. I really, it would be so much better if all of these cubes were kind of centered around 0, 0, 0, so that like my game object was the middle of these cubes instead of being at the end like this. It would just help me place it more accurately. Like let's say this is a row of coins in a mobile game I was making. I'd probably want the anchor point to be like here, not off awkwardly to the side. So what I'm gonna do to fix this is I'm gonna give this another value. This one's not going to be public. In fact, I'm gonna put it in my start function and it's gonna be var offset. I'm gonna give this one a float. And the way I'm gonna calculate this is I'm gonna say that I want the num divided by two times spread. So just imagine this, if num equals seven, right, and spread equals 10, then my cubes by default are gonna go from zero to 70 in the x position. So this is seven, this is 10. Now if I go ahead and say, okay, now this is seven divided by two, that's 3.5 times spread, which is 10. Now I have 35 units. This is exactly half of how long that row of cubes will be. And what's so nice about that is that I can just go ahead and say minus offset. Come back here, play, and check this out. Now, well, I guess I can't really control because they're not all parented. Maybe that'll be the next thing. But you can see that wherever I place it, that's where the line of cubes appears, uh, which is exactly what I wanted. That's really cool. Now I'm gonna show you one more kind of wacky thing. We're not gonna deal too much with two, two uh, with nested for loops um, until we get a little further along in the course. But I do wanna give you a preview of what's possible with this. What I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take this for loop and duplicate it. I gotta make sure that when I do this, that I close the second for loop and then I change I to J. Why J? Because it comes right after I in the alphabet. And in this time, I'm going to say, okay, instead of just uh, z as 0, why not z as j times spread minus offset, right? Same exact thing we did for x, except this time with j being the second loop. We're, we're going to really be able to visualize the effect of this in Unity, and we'll see a grid. So basically what's happening is this is the i's from before. And now inside, each time it does that, it does this in the j's. So imagine this is the first one, right, at negative 30 here in the x position. Now this one gets calculated, it calculates all of these j ones before it moves on to the next i, and then calculates all the j's again and then moves to the next i. Now we don't have to stop here, we can actually do one more because we still have a y position, right? So this one's just for fun. Let's grab this and we're gonna make j k instead, y k, because it's right after j. Push that up, make sure that you close your for loops. That's super important. The indentation becomes super important here. And then here we're gonna say k times spread minus offset. And with this whole crazy wacky for loop, what we're hoping to get is now a cube of cubes. Awesome, right? This is one instance where learning a little bit of code actually ends up saving us a ton of time. Right? And in some cases, even makes situations possible that wouldn't be possible otherwise. For instance, we could do things with uh, randomization here to make all of these cubes different colors, different shapes, different rotations. We could have all of them moving in patterns. There's some really nice things that we could do from here. Uh, but hopefully this gives you a great example of uh, what's possible with for loops and a great illustration of how what happens when you nest them together.